my name is Eli Peckman and I am very happy to be demonstrating the Turing Machine Expander Bytes, which allows the user to control the number of steps in the random loop while also being able to set it with a CV. So here I basically have one bit looping and you'll see that, sorry about my breadboard being all crazy, but you'll see that I'm actually changing the loop length with a potentiometer. Instead of a rotary switch, this is a lot less expensive and it's also um, basically allowed me to expand it up to a control voltage. So I go ahead and start messing with that. This is the normal 8 beat length and now we might start to see 7 and 6, 5, oh, sometimes locking doesn't work the way that it used to since you're injecting bits where they didn't used to be. This is 4, 3, 2, and 1 which will loop whatever was in the first bit. So now it's all going to be on. It's a little bit easier if I do inverted looping, um, since no matter what the bit is going to be, it's still going to flip the next time. You end up losing less bits. So there's a uh, one, let's see, two, three, four, uh, five, and... Uh, at this point, it's it's hard to exactly read which one it which one it's on. Also, um, I ended up making it so that you can use two separate potentiometers for the short and long loop length, and you use the original switch in order to select which one it is. So now this should be a it's either a 16 or a nine step loop. Can't really tell, but if I set it to 16, you'll get a really long on and a really long off. And then if I set it to nine, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but apparently this is a nine step loop um, and everything in between. So the gist of how this works is that I used two ADCs which have parallel outputs, meaning that the binary number, which is represented by the voltage is literally set to some pins on the outside. And then I used those to drive two 4051 switch ICs, which are switching the step number that is connected to the end of loop pad inside of the circuit. So basically when the Turing machine is looking for whichever bit was at the end of the last cycle, originally this was step eight or step 16, depending on the loop length, um, this is in intercepting that path and giving it a a bit that that is between the two values um, based on the setting of the switch I see. And fortunately, I was able to actually use the step output from the expander circuit to um, to allow the to use this. So basically, I'm using the gates output in order to transfer each steps uh, binary value into the expander. Um, you obviously can't do that for 16 bits. So what I ended up doing was I took the second 4015, stuck it in the expander, and then I just have the output of the switch I see since you only really need one value going back into, let's see if I can focus on that, uh, pin two of the original IC, which is where it gets its end of loop value. Um, unfortunately, you do have to cut one trace, which is the trace going to the switch for the end of the 8-bit, um, sorry, the, the short loop length, aka 8 steps. The end of the short loop length goes back into here, but it also goes to the DAC. So in order to isolate the two values, you have to cut a trace and run a wire coming from the switch so that let's say you had bit seven, you know, if you had a loop length of seven, you would have bit seven going into the end of loop value, but you would also have it inter intercepting bit eight, which, you know, probably wouldn't be that noticeable since you're getting a random voltage anyways, but it just seemed, it seemed like something that was a little too 
difficult for me to ignore. And, and it's something that you would be able to visually see also, you know, like why the hell isn't, isn't my loop looping the way that I intended it to? Well, it would be because whichever loop, whichever, I'm sorry, whichever bit is the end of loop bit would also be bit eight. So the trace is really easy to cut if you've already built the thing. And, um, so it would it would be easy for people who at least you know had some experience with circuit bending and things like that to do if they had already built it it wouldn't be as though you had to take the whole thing apart or start a completely new one in order to add this expander and also the place that you have to tap is fortunately a really big pad right here if i can get a good look at that so so that should also be pretty easy even for people who haven't really done this sort of thing before I'm gonna go ahead and stop yammering. Um, I have this going into my Rene as the quantizer and then up to the PT Audio digital, dual digital oscillator in order to make the sound. Uh, turn that up. It's boring as hell right now because it's just locked and looped. So let's go ahead and make it a short loop. So you can see here it's a loop length of three. Let's make it not locked. Oh, that's interesting. Let's uh, give it another length. In fact, let's lock it for a bit. So now it's a, a loop length of four, five, unlock it. just for fun.